right. Good evening. Uh, I will call to order a regular meeting of the Willington Board of Selectmen. It is Monday, August 7th at 6.30 p.m. No, all three selectmen are present. You will all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on our agenda is uh, approval of minutes, and I apologize there. Our agenda is misnumbered, but it is the third item. And you should have in your packet meeting uh, minutes from our July 17th meeting. Good entertaining motion. Right, motion from Mike. There's second. Second. Seconded by Jim. Any discussion on the minutes? All right, seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Can I just make a comment on minutes in general? You sure can. Um, I didn't think it warranted correction, um, but there were a couple of issues where there were sort of opposing viewpoints discussed in the meeting. And I think, I don't think we need a, a complete list of the dialogue of the conversation by any means, but I think if there are opposing viewpoints in something that's discussed and maybe worked out or not worked out, um, that it should, there should at least be a line addressing that, they're, that the selectmen have varying points of view. Just when people look back in history and they're trying to figure out why something was decided, um, they can see that there was maybe uh, an A opinion and a B opinion, and then the board worked it out or didn't work it out. Right. In our discussion. And it's a, you know, a good, Karen, still working to find that balance sure, between right. a, complete tra <laughs> a complete transcript um, right. and uh, um, discussion was held. <laughs> right. So right. somewhere in there we find that balance. So that yeah. feedback from, from all of us is important. Yeah, so, it is. Um, yeah, I think I think it could be very minimalistic, but just should capture that there was a little bit of debate or discussion about different viewpoints because that may that may be valuable in the future. Mm -hmm. and, and and I agree, Mike, as someone who spends time in uh, in the vault digging looking, through the minutes. Digging through minutes from uh, you know a various uh, boards and commissions as we you know, move um, to do certain items and look to see what was done in the past and how they got from point A to point B, it does come in handy. So when I, I come across a lot of discussion was held. I've, <laughs> and it, I've looked back at minutes, <laughs> I've looked back at minutes and said, oh, why did they decide that? Yeah, how did you get there? So, mm -hmm. all right, point well taken. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the president to speak. If you would like to speak, I ask you to state your name for the record and limit yourself to two minutes. Is there anyone present to speak? Mr. Blessington. John Blessington, 29 Mason Road. I would like to address the proposed change in town office building hours as acted on the last Board of Selectmen meeting on July 17th. I will start with a sentence as printed at the beginning of the discussion after first select woman Wyshynski made a motion, quote, to change the town office building hours to 34 open public hours, Monday through Thursday, and closed on Friday, beginning September 1st, 2023, for a probationary, probationary period of six months. The next sentence reads, quote, a final approval would come back to the BOS, but not necessarily in a public capacity to start during the negotiation process. Now, what does that sentence mean? The words are in English, but the way they are strung together is totally incoherent. Shortly after, thereafter, the minutes reflect that first elect woman Wyshynski made an amendment to the motion adding the hours Monday 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Tuesday through Thursday would be 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. A roll call vote follows, but what were you voting on? If you are amending the motion, you must vote on the amendment. If the amendment fails, then you vote on the original motion. If the amendment is approved, then you vote on the original motion as amended. You never said what you were voting on. The only item you could vote on was the amendment. If that was so, you approved the amendment, but discussion then ended, and you never approved the motion. And not having approved the original motion might be a good thing. Two town employees commented on the changes under presence to speak. 
I believe both of these would see an increase in their hours. One commented that this would be a good change for the town people as well as the employees. The other said the main goal is to extend the hours to the public. I think both of these are grossly insulting to the public. I noticed no members of the public were asked for their opinion. You would be extending the hours during open days, but you would be open one less day of the week, and it would also close the town offices at 6 p.m. on Monday instead of 7.30. That extra hour and a half has always been important to people who share the working hours with the towns. I expect that change especially might be unpopular with the townspeople, but then again, they don't seem to have been consulted. One of those employees that stated that a lot of research was done regarding a change in hours. I question that. Before making the change, you apparently considered exempting the senior center, but you never did. No cost was included in this. I have heard it said that employees are there all those hours, but the offices are closed. There would be no additional cost in opening these offices an additional seven hours a week. I question that also. According to my calculation, the assessor, building official, human services, land use, park, parks and rec, senior center services, tax collector, town clerk, assessor, and maybe the senior center would be staying open seven more hours a week. That is 63 more hours of employment a week. I do not believe this will come cheap. Where is the money coming to pay for this? I, I think you've handled this all wrong. A massive change like this needs to be planned. You need to figure out the cost for each department. You need to go before the Board of Finance with your request. The time to do this is not now. The way this should be done and always has been done is during budget season. You submit your budget to the Board of Finance with the change in hours. It would make sense to schedule it for July 1st, the beginning of the new fiscal year. This will also require a renegotiation of the union contract. I hear you expect to sign a memorandum of understanding with the union regarding this matter. I hope you intend to put together a negotiating team rather than just signing whatever you feel like. At the very least, I think the MOU needs to be approved by the Board of Selectmen. Unless there is an emergency requiring this massive change in our operations in the middle of election season, I think the matter should wait until the next budget season. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else present to speak? Anyone on the line? Going once, going twice. We'll have an opportunity at the end of the meeting if you so choose. All right, uh, correspondence. You have a list of correspondence in your packet. They're all available in our office. <coughs> Excuse me. Questions? Okay. Uh, all right, uh, status report. Um, I will ask, um, I have nothing new to report on the uh, steep grant for the septic at, at the Old Town Hall. The school building committee has not met, so we're still in good place, Mike. Status is the same as our previous selectmen meeting, trying to pull together the report and get uh, some more feedback from some of the committee members. And um, the goal is the meeting coming up a week and a half from now. Yeah. Uh, yes, a week and two days from now. Um, that we will have a draft pulled together for debate. Okay. Um, lot sit, since Mike D'Amato is in the room, I'll ask you for a brief update on our lot sit project. Again, this project is the sidewalk project from Hall School on River Road to um, the mills. Uh, so we had recently met recently with uh, CROC to do what <laughs> they're calling or what we refer to as the 90% design review. Um, at each phase of the plan development, we have to submit to them for review and then their consulting engineer provides comments. So we had that 90% review. Um, we received a, a positive uh, review or um, assessment from the State Historic Preservation Office, which we just got back um, and now have started the process with DOT because it's a state road. They need con concurrence on the plans, which they did when we submitted. So now they're going to review the 90% plans and we have to start the encroachment process. Um, so once that's done, um, we'll be able to finalize the plans and then move to um, basically bid documents. You Could you just clarify for the record what the encroachment process means? Yeah. Or so clarify for me, and it'll also be on the record. It's um, less involved because 
uh, originally we had assumed there would potentially be between 10 and 20 properties that would have some level of um, potential permanent encroachment because of the project. The way that we're moving now, um, there will be um, points in the construction sequence. And there may be activities occurring on their property, but it will not require permanent acquisition. So um, we're kind of modifying some of the plans and the way that it's going to be done so that we're not going to be doing what here referred to as a taking. But the encroachment process um, is, is the process by which DOT gives us the ability to conduct activities that encroach within their right of way along the, the roadway there. So um, the, the uh, takings procedure had we decided to go through with it for the entire project is a minimum of 18 months on the DOT side. So we're, we're changing gears a little bit and trying to reduce that so we don't sit for two years and wait for them to do what they're going to do and cross our fingers that costs don't just keep. Right. So the, so the state's going to use as much of their right away from the center line as possible. Right. That's what they're saying. Yes. And yep. then, then you don't have to worry about any other property taking or anything. Like because that. we're designing everything to new ADA standards, there would be some locations where we can't perhaps meet those criteria. And that's where we may have to look for um, something that's permanent. But in every other case, we're designing as a temporary um, easement during construction effectively it's what it'll be and we're going to have we'll, we'll do that outreach to all those property owners um, we've already done mailings and had meetings but we'll formalize that once we have a plan that we know DOT is willing to endorse um, and we've done a new cost estimate um, the nice thing about lots of this once the prod commits to funding if the market changes costs prod continues to fund that they have a $5 million cap, but we're, we're at like 1.1. So we're not going to be bound to what's happening with construction pricing. And somehow the town is going to have to have some expense that they didn't plan for. It's going to continue to be covered through the process. Thank you. All right. Uh, staffing uh, updates. A couple of things. The human services director position I anticipate being posted this week, um, and we will need a hiring committee for that, uh, along with um, the DPW director. We originally put that out for a little over two weeks. It closed last week. Um, I made the decision to post it longer. Um, we did not have uh, a, solid, a good return at all. Um, applications. So right now we didn't put an end date um, on it. It's until filled. And so we will continue to reevaluate. Would you both like to be on higher committees with those positions? Sure. Um, and so I will, I will keep you posted. The, we'll do the same with the human services director. They're on our website. We used um, the Chronicle. CCM. The Chronicle, right? CCM. Um, we did, I believe we did the current for online for 30 days. Um, so a little bit of cost into those things, but these are, you know, this is a critical um, department head position, um, but, you know, struggling to get applications. So um, we'll keep you posted on those as we get them and begin to look at scheduling. Jim, did you have a question? Um, just thinking, you know, public works director and all that. I mean, do we have, so first of all, do we have updated job descriptions for these two? I can get them to you, yes. Okay, because that's- so the current job descriptions, yeah. Current job descriptions mm -hmm. are important. Um, public works director, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe maybe there's an opportunity. Uh, we've talked about a need for facilities. Uh, director, you know, perhaps we can look for somebody who has you know, who can not only manage, you know, fleets of vehicles and, you know, a couple of works crew, but perhaps also buildings as well. Uh, there's an opportunity there to at least look for somebody with that management skill set. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, maybe we, before we, we rush off and, and, and post somebody, I just want to make sure that we have a job description that's up to date and, and perhaps there's an opportunity to think about this. You know, is, is that the direction we want to go? And right. We so haven't really talked about it too much here. We didn't. And I would say if we were going to change the job description and encapsulating in, in more than what we have already done, we'd be looking at different costs and that we have a plan for. And so already, I think in our budgeted um, amount to get some of the experience we hope to get is going to be challenging as it is in every other department. But if we 
go beyond the typical maintenance experience that we have asked of our previous directors and we're looking for something on a much higher scale um, and changing that job description, we'd also want to take a look at changing the, the salary and where those funds would come from. So um, I'll ask you to keep that in mind, but look, just because we get a, you know, a batch of, and I will tell you in three applications, um, it's not a stronger pool yeah, and it's not a strong pool at all. It's not um, at all. So, which is why we made the decision to put it out. It is, isn't, we can't just, you know, train someone on the fly. Um, that, that's not the kind of position we're looking for. So if we want to look at a, a, an overhaul, then we kind of need to push the pause button, but figure out where the funding is going to come from. Because I think increasing the budget would be necessary. So... Um, if that's something you're thinking and you'd like to do, we can push pause on that um, and, and look at, uh, you know, reworking the job description and what, you know, our expectations are out of this position um, and, and where we would obtain funding from. It, it might be worth looking at. It might be worth looking at. I don't know. I mean, I'll give you the job descriptions and you can take a look and see if you have more feedback. I, if you can get to all of us, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Absolutely. sure Mike's interested as well. Mm. Okay. Um, August 16th, um, the TOB is going to need to close to the public. Uh, and so I'm asking for your uh, kind of stamp of approval. We need uh, some training was scheduled um, while I was on vacation for that particular date. And due to the schedules of our staff, there would be coverage in a number of um, offices. And the training is um, from nine a.m. to 1 p.m. It's not in this building. So we counted that travel time. You know, we're really looking at it could be open for a half an hour that's on either a, that's end. A, that's a Wednesday. In case it's a Wednesday. Wednesday. So um, that we will be looking to close that while staff attends training on that um, software. Anyone who would not be in that training for any reason would still report here and be working here. So they would still be working. We just wouldn't be open to the public. So we're not closing the town office building. We're closing it to the public. Staff will still be working. There might be a couple of assistants who would need to go that are part time, very part time. Um, so, anything we can do, I think, to put on our website, yeah, yeah, we'll advertise the door that. to say, hey, you know, there will be something here, and there will be because the majority of staff will be in this building, will be at Hall School for training. Um, and we'll put it on the website, we will use our social media, and we'll put it out in e blast. Um, if we do for all of those things, August 28th, um, we had talked about when we, um, when I made the proposal for ARPA and June, I think you were here for um, the beginning of that and then Mike and Oak Studio, and that was a um, small amount of money for all staff, including school staff. We did um, a, a small luncheon catered by Flat Penny uh, at the end of the school year, and we plan to do one more um, beginning of the school year. Town hall staff will be here. Each of the school staff will be at their schools. Um, again, using a vendor in Willington to pump that ARPA money back into um, our own economy. And so I'm asking to close the town hall for one hour, open one hour later at 1230 so that all the staff could attend. And again, we publicize that. We need one hour later, right? One third, did I say? We open at 1230. The staff would report at 1230 as normal. Um, they report <laughs> earlier, they report earlier. We'd open to the public at 130, so just one hour. We do have a need for recording secretaries. I might mention this a couple of times at both CIP and Board of Finance. So if you know of anyone who's interested, anyone listening to our, watching our meeting, reading our minutes, um, they can contact the uh, selectman's office. It does pay $20 an hour um, attendance at meetings and um, typing that. People should know it. it's, it's nighttime. It's not... It, de it depends on the meeting. You, it's, it's typically night. night. It's typically night. Then. Well, the meeting is, but then there's other time. It'll be the discretion of that secretary to prepare the right. minutes. And so we have job descriptions available, but there is a need for that as we begin uh, the new CIP season and continuing board of finance. Um, I want to share with you, and our tax collector is on. Um, she reported to me late this afternoon. We are approximately. Uh, 53.8% of our annual collections from um, first half of tax collection. And they're still processing things as they come in, um, but great job to those folks. Um, a lot of things come in the mail, a lot in the drop boxes. Um, 
And so they're continuous, uh, continuing to work to, to that. Um, I just want to address some of the comments made regarding the change in our hours. First, my recollection was that there was a friendly amendment made to add in the specific hours. So we voted on one motion that had a friendly amendment. Uh, if I watch the TPAC, I may correct myself. Um, there's no additional hours, and we talked about this, to any employee. Um, our most of our full time staff outside of public works in the finance department work 35 hours, so they would need an additional hour outside of those 34 open hours and how that works would be department by department, just as it is now we're open 27 open hours, they work 35 hours they work more hours than we're open. Um, so and I, and I remember asking about cost because that was correct. Yeah, we I remember you saying that there's neutral. no additional hours worked. It's additional public facing hours, that is and therefore it's cost neutral. That is correct. If an employee, a part time employee, work 30 hours, they still will only work 30 hours. Yeah. So there will be staffing um, needs met within each department. There are two staff members. One works 30. One works 35. They will work so there's coverage in the department for those 34 hours. So there are no additional hours. That is, uh, you know, absolutely untrue um, to any employee. Any additional hours would come through this board, and we would be making those decisions. That had not been changed. Because I think Selectman Blessington was correct that you you propose something, it goes to the board of finance. Right, but we're not. That's, that's the procedure, but we but we're not going that way. Correct. Right? Right. We yes, I had, the, I had the same recollection during the comments and presence of speak, and um, I would suggest anyone who has a question about it, uh, you know, go back and watch the tape because I believe we discussed it. I think everything that was brought up for concerns was discussed. I believe so as well. But I also know that we've had audio problems here in this mm -hmm. room in particular. Yes. But I, I just I want it to be I want it to be heard here now. And the slot when you're each aware of the vote that yes. we made was based on a proposed. Um, cost neutral. Now listen, we said probationary, six months. Yep. We will need to share our feedback with the incoming board of selectmen. Yep. Uh, as half will be on our time and half will be on theirs. Mm -hmm. And and so a determination can be made. If this doesn't meet the, the needs of the town, right. then we have to look to something different, um, which is why I propose a probationary period. Agreed. Okay. And I, th I think it is important to hear what the townspeople and or customers, the contractors, Absolutely. those people coming in for their permits. Mm -hmm. You know, does this work? Does it not work? Right. Yeah. And we did hear from some public, chose to speak and present to speak, um, that, you know, spoke their um, piece about it. But there is, regardless of the employees that chose to speak as uh, members of the public, they were not speaking because they were suddenly going to be getting paid more and more um, hours. That is um, the falsehood. So I want to address that. All right, public works. We I uh, have a report here. We are working to. They've been working on uh, Holster Road, putting up some uh, new poles, parking, no parking signs um, in and around the Love's Truck Stop. Also, work is being done. The paving project on Holster Road. It's taken longer than anticipated. Um, I'm hoping tomorrow we will have a firm commitment from our vendor as to when the work will be complete. They've been grading uh, various roads in town, including Mikulik Road. They spent um, some time assisting the school putting up solar powered speed limit signs on Hall School, uh, in front of Hall School. Um, they put stone on Cosgrove Road, picked up trash at the park. They came here and changed light, pole, light bulbs in various areas. Um, and they've been continuing roadside mowing um, amongst their many other things. So I think um, still work continuing there. All right, the next item is an executive session. So I will move to enter into executive session regarding pending litigation pertaining to negotiations and possible settlement of Willington Property Group LLC versus Town of Willington, Connecticut, pending in the Superior Court. Seconded by Mike. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We pause the recording. I'm going to ask folks to step outside. All right, 703, we have ended executive session. And out of executive session, we have a motion to make. Uh, I move to approve the settlement in the amount of 
$18,766.66 on pending litigation to Willington Property Group, LLC, and authorize the first selectman to execute. Second. Seconded right. by Mike. Any discussion? All right. Uh, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Jim? Aye. Mike? Aye. Erica? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Item A, and then we can send Mr. D'Amato home for the evening. Um, EDC town signage contract. This is really more information sharing. Um, EDC has a project to put some signs, Willington signs up, um, and they're looking to enter into a contract to do so because of the cost of it. It does not require Board of Selectmen uh, approval. It's under the $5,000 limit um, that triggers that process. And but I asked uh, Mr. D'Amato um, and EDC if they could share with us some information about these signs, as I think the Board of Selectmen should be in the know. Yeah, so um, this was a project that I think was originally envisioned when um, Rick Maloney was chair and the request that went to the Board of Finance, I guess it would have been two cycles ago, uh, included a, a chunk of funds for signage. Um, based upon the costs of everything, we had to wait so that we could make use of soon to end and soon to begin fiscal year so that we could have enough to cobble together buying it because we'll say on top of it, I think we could save a little bit on installation and other things. So the project is to um, welcome to Wellington signs. Um, as Erica mentioned, it is not within the, we did a, a bid um, and reviewed, the Economic Development Commission reviewed the bids and um, has made a recommendation on awarding a bid. It doesn't, um, as I mentioned, meet the criteria for needing you to officially award it. Um, but <clears throat> so the goal would be to install uh, two. As of now, um, we are working on evaluating right away locations and, and areas that would have the most visibility, but we're thinking sort of West Wellington um, and the second location that we sort of evaluated but hadn't made a decision on would either be the 30 or the, for the second sign would be on 32 when you come in out of Mansfield or 74 when you come in from Ashford. Um, we're trying to find a location ideally where we can work with a property owner and not have to deal with the DOT. Um, but you also want to have something that has a really good sight line so that people can actually see it, you know, before they're up on top of it. Um, when I had reviewed this originally with Erica, she had mentioned um, the fact that the town is a heart safe community and wanting to have that um, banner or, or whatever. With, yeah, there's like a an so like street sign. Yeah, 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 that wraps. So, um, we will work with the, uh, the vendor on that to see if we can get that included underneath the sign. Um, so the, the next step for us would be to get the signs into production because that's obviously going to take a little bit of time. Um, we have a couple of things to design. You see there, we, we, can, we can modify it slightly based upon colors, but everybody at both the EDC and members of the public that attended the EDC meeting all really liked that sign. Um, one of the things that maybe you don't catch, but but if you look, the tops of the sign are actually spools of thread, um, which which um, everybody really liked and thought was subtle, but but important component. So we've got to just look at exactly what would be feasible um, as far as where would make the most sense. We obviously don't want these things to get taken down or, or slammed by 60 mile an hour DOT snowplow, you know, walls of ice. And, and, so we've got to think through that, but um, that's that's where things are, and it came in under budget. And I believe that this so is the vendor that you've chosen for this has done some other signs in town. So I definitely can see the yeah um, the continuity between mm, signs yeah. we have out front here, um, and and these signs, and, and I think they look really nice. And which is why I said to Mike, if we could um, put some of those heartsea community signs there, we were struggling with getting permission from DOT to put them up. Um, and some of the existing poles we were going to put them up on, um, mm -hmm. keep coming down. So I'm um, struggling with that, but I think these look really great. I think this is really wonderful. I um, just this weekend 
at a stoplight in another um, town, a city uh, in the south of Connecticut that um, had similar signs, beautiful um, plantings around that landscaping around them and were sponsored by businesses. Granted, it was a bigger city, but thought maybe in the future, if we wanted uh, more than just these two, maybe that's a direction to go um, and put some advertising there. So any comments or questions? I like it, actually. I, I, I like the design. It looks sharp. Just, got, just so people can see yeah. it. Try to I figure that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Trying to do that with the camera and all that. Uh, yeah, and it's it's really nice. It, it stands right out. When so. they go up, we'll put something. Uh, we'll put a, a little presser up too, so this will be on our website, and you'll be able to see it on our social media. I'm only aware of one, I think, by the truck stop. There was some a similar design like that. Um, yeah, I think the. I think it's a good idea. I think if it's received well, um, you know, we probably could come up with a couple more locations over time of those key entry points. Um, Ironically, the sign that Mansfield has is very nice, but it almost implies that turning left on Route 32 from 195 is also Mansfield, right. which is only yeah. true for about 200 feet. Um, you know, so maybe we can put one right next to the Mansfield sign that says, well, this is actually Willington, but right. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> trying. Right. Yeah, go. immediately to the left of it. Yeah. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. It's great. I think they're wonderful. I think it's nice to see when Mansfield put theirs up, they caught my attention right away. Mm. Uh, I wish we had those when EDC was working on it. So thanks uh, to all those at EDC. Um, you still have, do you have opening in the EDC still? We do. You, yeah. One? Uh, Two? No. All right. So if anybody's interested, yeah. EDC, uh, still these members, that is an appointed board, not an elected board. So yes, we're gibbering in the willing to speak. It's economic uh, development. Well, can, I, can I finish speaking? <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> well, can you? Yeah. So the uh, EDC is the Economic Development Commission. Um, oh, I was wondering that. Yeah. And uh, they are always looking for members. So if you have an interest, uh, you still just have an interim chair? Yes. Okay. Um, and so they, they certainly have a great need there. So thanks to those who are already serving and anyone interested in serving can reach out to um, Mike D'Amato and Land Use or the town clerk or the selectman's office. All right, moving along. Thank you, Mike. And we won't be offended if you don't stay. <laughs> All right. But you're welcome anyways. Moving Unless along to item B, which is approving uh, a lease, uh, a resolution for our seven year lease. I will move the town, and will, town of Willington Board of Selection resolution, whereas on April 19th, 2022, the electors and all persons entitled to vote at the town meeting, the 2022 town meeting in the town of Willington, Connecticut, the town approved a capital improvement budget, the CIP, in connection with its fiscal year 2022 2023 budget, the 2023 budget. And whereas the CIP in the 2023 budget included an appropriation in the amount of $245,896 for a dump truck, the dump truck appropriation for the town's Department of Public Works and an appropriation in the amount of $87,160 for a first response vehicle, the first response <clears throat> vehicle and the town's, for the town's fire department, the first response vehicle appropriation. And Whereas at the 2022 town meeting, the town authorized the dump truck appropriation to be funded by lease financing in an amount not to exceed $125,000 and the first response vehicle appropriation to be funded by lease financing in an amount not to exceed $75,000. And whereas on July 18, 2022, the Board of Selectmen authorized an increase in the dump truck appropriation up to $265,050, the increased dump truck appropriation. And whereas at a separate special town meeting held on November 14th, 2022, the town authorized the balance of the increased dump truck appropriation to be funded by the town's capital reserve fund. <clears throat> and whereas on July 17th, 2023, the town's board of selectmen awarded the lease purchase financing for the dump truck and the first response vehicle to Flagstar Public Funding Corp, Flagstar, in the total amount of $194,500 with $75,000 allocated for the first response vehicle and $119,500 allocated to the dump truck, the lease agreement. 
And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Willington hereby authorizes the first selectman on behalf of the town to execute the lease agreement with Flagstar and any other agreement, instruments, documents, and certificates to consummate the lease purchase transaction with Flagstar. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mark. So this agree, we chose a vendor last week. This resolution agrees to um, now sign a lease agreement with that and authorize me to do so. Okay. And there's no concerns or anything like that. About, I mean, last time when we checked, it's still there. And vehicle didn't. Not that we, we know. Yeah. There's been no communication. We're anticipating uh, November was the time frame um, we were last given for the dump truck. Um, and I believe the first response vehicle is uh, ready to go. And we do not want to. Uh, we don't want to lose, we don't want to lose this again. Yes, the last communication I saw was between Donna and the dealership. Mm -hmm. about insurance and all that yeah. other stuff. So it's ready once this is completed, they're ready to move. And if we uh, so move this resolution, I have all of the documents ready and prepared to sign for our manager. Okay. Um, just as a caveat, there is a town meeting tomorrow, which is a public hearing, which is information sharing on this process with the town. Simply information sharing, um, it's best practice and that's Right, that's the, that's the quirky thing. It's a public hearing on the leasing only. Because we've, we've already handled already, the rest of it. Yes, Went we've already the handled it. And just so you're all aware, this is a, a little off the motion, but making sure that we understand so that we could properly share the information, which I will tomorrow at the public hearing. There is no policy. There is no statute that requires us to have such a public hearing. It is a past practice of the town of Willington and we continue to do so. Typically, we package that with town meeting actionable items, which was the intention in this public hearing, but the items we had to package with it were not ready, so we had to hold off. So it is a public hearing just for the information sharing on the lease. It's a way for us to share the leasing information to the public, but all of the appropriations and authorizations to spend money, access the money, and um, secure the vendor have already gone through, whether it be CIP a year ago, two years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Some of these things take time. So all of the adequate appropriations have taken place. All right, seeing no other discussion, all those in favor of the resolution? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, we have some tax refunds. And I don't know, some of these, can't we receive some uh, last minute, so we, uh, we moved many of them to move them forward. So the only one I have is like a couple. All right, so I, any you don't have, you can, I will share with you if you don't have it. I will start with, uh, I move to refund Paul Nickel, um, no, I'm sorry, I move to refund Highland Hollow LLC an overpayment in the amount of $109.11. Second. Seconded by Jim. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to refund Gary L. Dietz Jr. Uh, certificate of correction in the amount of $225.77. Second. Seconded by Jim. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All right, I I move to refund uh, Douglas H. Young. Refund in the amount of $26.05. Second. Seconded by Mike. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move to refund Douglas F. Lewis. A certificate of correction in the amount of five hundred seventy-five dollars and eighteen cents. Second. Seconded by Jim. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Aye. <laughs> yes, she did. I move to refund uh, Chris, Christelle A. Berry a certificate of correction in the amount of twenty-eight dollars sixty-eight cents. Second. Seconded by Mike. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, that's not bad. 
as we end the budget season last year, I believe we had in our 20s, mm -hmm. the 30s. So this is um, pretty far. Many years ago, I don't know if it was necessary or if the process was different or whatever, but many years ago when the, each refund was read, there was a little more information as to why. Um, there wasn't just the technical reason um, okay. of overpayment, it was why there was an overpayment. Okay. Um, changing the assessment of the vehicle, it was a lease that was returned during the period, um, you know, vehicle was damaged in an accident or yeah, and some, up or something like that. Sometimes so. we have attachments. Um, I know a lot of times there, uh, I got a tax bill. Oh, I sold that car six yeah. or seven months ago. I returned yeah. the lease. Yeah. Um, that is the majority of these. I see, is our tax collector, Janice, still on? Uh, Janice, there, in many times the information has been attached to these documents. Can uh, she's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I see her coming down no, the hall. She's not coming down the hall. She, Taking a turn. Okay, so we'll make sure that she um, attaches some of that. Yeah, I'm not sure it's necessary. I just was kind of it's curious nice what the refunds are for. Yeah, and they're usually they would be attached. The information they start with the assessor, and then the assessor gives the correction to the tax collector. So it doesn't come from the tax collector; it comes from the assessor. Um, and um, I believe all of these are motor vehicles. It's the same handful. Of, it's only four or five reasons. So oh, yeah. vehicle, no longer have the vehicle, vehicle damage, vehicle loss, stolen, whatever. Yeah, and it's, I just didn't, most people typically don't know they need to tell your town. Yeah, right. They're not aware until they get right. a tax bill and say, why would I be taxed on that car? I haven't owned that car. And depending on when the um, vehicle was changed, most of these are vehicle related. Um, I can't tell from these, but that is typically what we see. And we do get a lot of um, the information attached. I'll make sure that that gets on here and that you can see that in the future. All right, we're going to move right along to old business. We had a holdover of uh, um, a potential appointment to Planning and Zoning Commission on alternate. Um, we had asked if there had been an, an endorsement. Um, Karen, did you share this? Give them a copy of this. So this is what came from Mr. Marshall. No, I didn't know. To Karen. That's, that's what came originally. This is this is or what this came after, after our meeting. After okay. our meeting, this came from Mr. Marshall. Okay. To Karen. So yeah. it's certainly a letterhead, but it's not addressed to anyone, nor is it signed by anyone. Okay. Um, but it is a letterhead. And then you all received the email communication from uh, chair of PCC. Yeah. Yep. Um, we had also asked if they had any input, if he had any input, and he received that input. So um, I certainly would have hoped for um, something different in the endorsements, um, but it's not. So uh, we have the option of taking action. Uh, if there, if anyone chooses to make a motion, the uh, potential suggested motion, if if we do so, or discussion. I don't think I have anything to add at this point. Okay. Uh, I don't think I have anything to add either. Okay. All right. Um, did anyone want to make a motion? No. Okay. Seeing no motion, um, there will be no action on the appointment. And at that point, it just means that we, we made no uh, such appointment. We did not vote the or nay. No action was chosen to be taken. Correct. Yeah, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, item B, the Everbridge emergency notification policy. So, um, Mike, I know, I know you have been busy. <laughs> well, <laughs> put this back on so that we can get, we need a policy. I've asked Karen, you had gotten us some from some yep. larger communities. Mm -hmm. I know I had seen some in the past from um, Talent and Mansfield, so our neighbors, um, very simple policies. We can always add or you know, right. amend right. Um, after we have one. So I've asked Karen if maybe tomorrow, unless you have something new to, to reach out to, uh, to those folks in their emergency management and get their policy. That would be fine. The only action I've taken in the interim since we last talked about it was we got those links for the training from the mm -hmm. Everbridge guy. Yep. And I didn't, I didn't do my link fast enough. I had to reach out to him and get a new <laughs> one because I had it timed out. Yeah. Um, so I did do that and registered for some of the training. So I have been working through okay. some of that. So Karen is. Um, but I hadn't some. taken any action on my policies. So Karen um, has been feverishly working. She's been working with Kevin McManus 
at um, Everbridge and take in some training. She still wants to take some more. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot, yeah. right? And we're not going to use it yeah. a lot. Ideally, we're not going to use it a lot. She did what you see in your packet. Maybe for emergency alerts. But I mean, but we're, I mean, yeah. unless we have a, a plethora of storms, we're not going to be using this yeah. on the daily. So it's going right. to take a lot of refresher to remember right. how to put something in. But the very first thing we need to do, even before we have that policy, is get information prepared to get people to sign up. Yep. If they don't, I apologize. If they don't sign up for it, it does no good. It goes out to nobody. So Karen, um, working with Everbridge, he had offered up some examples from some towns and how they had um, what they use on their website, what they use to solicit. Um, I'd like to send a communication using our social media, our, our, um, our Facebook page, our um, website, sorry, and a direct mailer to people. Right. And then every time we have an event, an opportunity to share with people and then and teach them, educate them on what the system is and then how to sign up. And um, we could be ready by the time of the, um, the uh, flea market. That would be great, wouldn't it? I, and I think we can. Karen's got some, you know, East Lime is the one you see here. She printed it for you. We saved some money by printing it black and white. This is on their website. I mean, it is, yeah. it's bold, it's, perfect. it's here. And then all of these sheet, follow-up sheets are step-by-step -step on that yeah. website. They're mm -hmm. not clickable, just the first one. So we can do something similar and information, create a QR code um, for folks to go out there and click that, will take them right to where they need and then sign up. This is separate from the state CT alert. And we will say that to people. If you signed up for CT alert for those major things, you're still going to get those. Right. This is specifically town. It's just up to us to say, is it going to be because the dump closed, um, because the trash bins are full? Is right. it because a road's closed, because the tree's down? Is it because mm -hmm. um, organization A is having an event? We just need to say what the system right. is going to be used for and get that into place. So at our next meeting, um, we had hoped to have one today, but it took a little bit to get this from um, Mr. McManus. So Karen wants to work on a mock-up. We hope to have pricing for what that will cost you and let you know so that we can shoot it out in the mail, get it out there, and um, hopefully have a policy at the same time. So if we get those, I might take a crack at um, editing them um, for us. So at least we'll have a first draft mm. of a policy for our next meeting and get this up and running hopefully in right. September. Um, we have a municipal election that usually brings out quite a few people. We right. could have a table outside, um, back off the 75 feet to get people to sign up for this while they're here. Yeah. Um, but if we do it in September, hopefully it's the time for a non parking <laughs> I, um, I agree that we could start off with a good but basic policy yes. and then tweak it as we need to. Mm -hmm. I think all the time during the ad hoc committee that we had for this, yes. um, and I haven't heard different since then, it seems pretty consistent from the committee members and the public that we primarily needed two different types of messaging. There was the true emergency messaging, and then there was the more important level of administrative messaging. Yes. Um, and there didn't seem to be a lot of interest in the more day-to-day -day administrative messaging. And, and a lot of people in the industry discourage that because it makes people ignore the messages. So you don't, you, you don't want to use it for the, even though it's good information for some people in town, you don't want to use it for like the bake sales and things right. like that because people will learn to ignore it. It needs to either be important administrative messages or emergencies. And the people signing up typically have the opportunity to opt out of the administrative messages completely, in which case they will only get emergency messages. And that seemed to be advisable. Um, and and the, the general administrative stuff just has to be in a different venue, a different, yeah. a different method of communication. And I think we continue our same method of communication for those, right? right. I think right. worse than ignoring it, they're going to opt out altogether and right. miss a, a potential an emergency message. Right. message. You know, some of the um, administrative like things are there's a municipal election on X date. That is something we use that system. You're going to hit the most amount of people that and make sure that they have it. Every year we have a budget referendum, and every year we have people say, So just be very key events. 
complete town-wide events sponsored by the town. Yeah. And they would have to be big events like that, those kinds of voting events we'd want people to know about. Sure. Um, and it's one more way to do that. So um, I hope to have a, a draft for you next week um, on a separate item. I expect to have a draft of the um, approved by the attorney on the abatement at our next meeting. And also you see that back on the agenda. So if there's anything additional you can think of that's like on that policy, um, even just some basic thoughts, shoot them off to Karen. We can know if they're in there. If not, find some verbiage that fits them in there. So if you have some thoughts in the meantime. Um, so our next look at our next meeting to have a draft of the policy and a draft of messaging to folks. Uh, to go out there and be ready to go with that. And I thank Karen for really working so hard taking on this. She's going to crash course on all things Lillian. <laughs> thank you, Karen. Uh, yeah. As you can see, uh, Ms. McManus is quite busy and sometimes yes. it takes a while to get in touch with them and get him back to your, you know, through his list of people he's responding to, get him back to you. Right. Um, and it was nice to have you where, you know, it's, I know you're busy, but at least it's within your list of duties <laughs> your desk for. Um, I was having trouble fitting it in with all my other duties. I figured That's now we've got this job. <laughs> <laughs> we figured. Okay. Yeah. All right. That brings us to present to speak. Is there's no one left in the room with us, so they have nothing to say. Online, if you're present to speak, you can raise your hand. You do not need to come on camera. I ask you to state your name for the record and limit your comments to two minutes. Mr. Marshall. Hi guys, uh, James Marshall, 46 Fisher Hill Road. Um, I just want to chime in and correct the record on the discussion of my potential alternate appointment to planning and zoning. I don't know what letter you received, but it did not come from me, as you stated um, in your discussion with uh, Karen there. Um, I assume it came from Mr. Tian, as he told me it was sent, and I believe in the meeting you were at at the Willington, Willington Town Democratic Committee, uh, Erica, that it was passed around for approval. Um, so again, I haven't seen it. I just want to correct Rick that, that it didn't come from me, but also uh, respectfully, I mean, I, I know you saw that letter. I know it was discussed at a meeting. Um, you know, if there were concerns about the content of that letter, you just, you stated you weren't happy with it um, or you expected more Then by all means, you had the opportunity to talk about it. And again, you all know me as well. You also had the opportunity to just, you know, a minimum amount of communication just to, um, discuss <laughs> prior to any public, um, I guess, board meeting. But at any rate, it is what it is. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else present to speak? All right, seeing none, I will move to good and welfare. Uh, mobile food chair, as always, is here every other week. The next um, here at the town office building will be Wednesday, August 16th from 11 to 11.30. As of Wednesday, August 30th, that mobile food chair will move from the drive through model that they've allowed us to have since COVID, um, returning to a walk-up model. So meaning residents will need to park, uh, they'll need to bring their reusable bags. We may have some for a short time period as we move to the transition. Um, and they will approach the food share truck individually and choose their items. So across the board, food share allowed us when they moved back to their typical model, they allowed the town of Wellington to stay with the drive-through model. Um, they are ceasing that everywhere. They have done that and we're seeing a big change in food share. And so we knew this was coming at some point. So, but food share will still be here. It will just be a walk-up model um, beginning August 30th. And um, our volunteers are telling people as they come through the line, so they'll know in the future. As always, it's open, not just to Willington residents, um, but to, to anyone um, living in Connecticut. Please continue to support our small businesses and restaurants if you can. Our Wednesdays in the Park concert series, once again, has been uh, wonderful and uh, popular, um, but I've, all good things must come to an end. So the last concert is not Wednesday this week, but Tuesday, it's tomorrow um, from 6.30 to 8.30 at River Road Athletic uh, Complex featuring Deep Purple. So uh, I wanna thank uh, Jimmy Callahan, our Parks and Rec Director. He was able to get an additional concert uh, lined up. We've had one canceled due to weather earlier. And although they couldn't reschedule, we got another concert so we could extend it another week. 
um, and human services will be selling concessions and collecting items, uh, school supply items for our back to school drive. You can see our website or Facebook for more information on the concerts. In addition, here in the town office building in the front hallway, there is um, a donation box for school supply items for our back to school drive. If anyone would like to donate. Our July report from Troop C is as follows. 283 total calls for service. In July, that included 10 accidents, 13 criminal investigations, zero burglaries, three larcenies, 105 non-reportable matters, and 10 arrests. Motor vehicle enforcement was 101 total traffic stops. Wow, I couldn't have printed this smaller. Uh, two on-site DUIs, one arrest, zero misdemeanor summons, 59 infractions, 14 written warnings, and 26 verbal warnings. And I will note um, it has a total call for the year of 2,104. The last day to have paid your car tax, personal property, or first installment of uh, property tax without interest was August 1st, beginning August 2nd. And this is anything not postmarked or dropped here by August 1st. Um, anything after that date, beginning August 2nd, um, now begins uh, interest at the rate of one and one half percent per month um, from the due date. So keep um, that for folks to keep that in mind. Um, I know there's often folks that aren't happy and if they have questions about the process and it is a very legal process of collecting taxes here, I encourage them to calmly come in and speak with us. Um, I also want to mention the library is holding a community picnic this Saturday, August 19th from 10 to 2 at River Road Athletic Complex, um, celebrating uh, another celebration of their 100th anniversary. So uh, come on out and join them. And then on Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Public Library, um, hosted by the Historical Society, there will be um, an event honoring a lifetime of service to our community. Betty Robertson um, is leaving Willington for warmer climate. Um, and so you have an opportunity to thank her for her service and dedication to Willington. Um, we certainly will miss her. But there's an open house at 2 p.m. with a musical tribute to follow by the band of Steady Habits to encourage the public to attend um, that event and wish Mrs. Robertson well. That is all I have. Folks, anything additional, Mr. McCoo? Uh, sure, two quickies. Um, a lot, there's been uh, some scuttlebutt off and on on social media about police presence in town, about speeding, about dirt bikes, about uh, vehicles, uh, all sorts of stuff. And there were a lot of comments about why won't the town do anything. I encouraged uh, in that moment, I encouraged people to please come to the Board of Selectmen and speak. Bring the concerns. I'm sure you do get concerns administratively, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but as a board, bring them to the board because we've talked about this in budget season right. many times. Um, you know, we've talked about ideas before. There was the idea of cameras before, which was felt was not a good fit for Willington. Um, there has been work to fund um, state troopers and all that. So we, for the good and welfare of the community, if people have concerns, they should feel free and encouraged to come to this meeting and encourage us as we went to budget season, which is coming up soon. I can't believe it. Right. Um, you know, to be thinking about new ways that we might approach that. Also- Can I just uh, add uh, to that? Yes. Uh, I do communicate regularly with the um, state police, mm -hmm. specifically about these matters, mm -hmm. asking them when we get concerned about specific roads and increased traffic of those things, asking them to do increased monitoring as they can. Um, so they're well aware of the, this in Willington and many other towns. Mm -hmm. We see it in front of this building all day, every day, except the rainy days. <laughs> um, and then the other item, uh, which I think is very positive, um, and I only wish there were more townspeople on to hear this, but currently the town of Willington has junior members, I'm talking about 15 year olds, um, from both fire departments at the Connecticut Fire Academy in sleepaway camp for juniors, special camp to get juniors involved and to try to get kids when they're young interested in the fire service, give them important training and um, continue uh, the spirit of public service and particularly volunteerism for the small towns. 
Um, and I think we should be very proud of the fact that there are 15 year old kids from both fire departments um, spending an entire week at the fire academy, again, some on their second year at a more advanced level. Um, and uh, going working from seven in the morning until 10 o'clock at night with no cell phones. Um, that's a big sacrifice for today's kids. And they're doing it all for the excitement and the interest in the community. And I think it's a real great thing for us. It's great. So are there, are there any junior members or uh, regular members looking um, to find a way to serve um, in the fire department might be their niche. Um, I encourage you to reach out to either Willington uh, Hill Fire Department or Willington Number One. We are always in need of volunteers. Amen. Always. So thank you. Thank those young folks. Um, great way to spend their summer. Yes. All right. Seeing no other business before us, I will move to adjourn at 7:39 p.m. Second. Second by Jeff. Um, this is a non-debatable matter. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned at 7.39. 7 All right.